Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. My name is Ben Van Camp. Um, get to be your host today. I'm the vice president at the Chamber Collaborative. Um, we have a lot, uh, several other people I think will be jumping on here as we get started. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see some some more people join us. I'm really curious who the pandemic president is, though. That, that one's got me got me questioning. But um, anyways, great to be here. Uh, talk about one of my uh, favorite topics uh, to, to work on at the Chamber, and that's workforce. And uh, delighted to uh, be able to share some exciting new opportunities that we have around uh, youth apprenticeships um, with you all today. So a uh, couple of little housekeeping things um, just to get things rolling. Uh, I'd like to welcome Judy Davidson, our bookkeeper is here, Jen Stevens, the Chamber's communication and events uh, manager is here with us. And I am the vice president of membership and, and other things at the chamber and whatever else they tell me to do. Um, and one of which is workforce, which is why I get to lead this session today. So uh, as always, this is uh, being recorded. We will uh, be sharing this on our, our YouTube and, and, and other channels um, in the near future. Um, so, so know that we are being recorded. Therefore, if you say something crazy, we have evidence of that. Um, anyways, but uh, we're really excited. Uh, everyone will be on mute. If you have a question, there's the chat feature there. Um, feel free to drop it in the chat and we'll, we'll get to those questions at a couple different points throughout the, the program. Real brief, a couple upcoming um, chamber events that I just wanna make sure are on your calendars or radars. Uh, we have uh, the State of the State on Wednesday, the 14th with Governor Chris Sununu. So it's really just gonna be Governor Sununu and us. Um, locked in a Zoom room, if you will. And uh, it's a great opportunity to hear directly from him and ask questions directly to him. It's not every day we get to ask uh, questions directly to the governor and he's always been fabulous about taking those, um, those questions from us. So that's the 14th at 8.30. Uh, we, we do have a capacity of about 100 for that. So uh, you do wanna sign up early if, if you wanna be part of that. Um, there is no fee to attend that for chamber members. On the 23rd, our next Chamber Chat Live, we are gonna be hearing the results of the SBDC um, resiliency um, survey that they did. They did one round early on in the pandemic. They did a second round just recently. Um, and thanks to our partnership with the Economic Development Center for Port Portsmouth, yeah. Uh, they have drilled those results down to just the SECO. So instead of just hearing the statewide results, we're going to hear local results for that. So that'll be in two weeks from today, same time, one o'clock. Um, so join us for that. And then uh, just looking a little bit down the road, I want to make sure everyone has the dates of May 12th to 16th ingrained in your brain because uh, we have a five day event known as Hit the Decks. Uh, so we'll be celebrating all our, our fun outdoor spaces, our decks, our um, our, our dining options, our shops, our, our retailers downtown, um, our hotel partners and lodging properties and all of our attractions. So uh, hit the decksportsmith.com is where you can find out more information about that. Uh, we actually uh, have a wonderful sport this year from Bowie Local, the, uh, an affinity and gift card program through Bangor Savings Bank. Uh, you'll be hear, hearing more about that. Um, in a partnership with Allegiant Airlines, we're gonna be giving away a couple of airline tickets um, and $100 gift cards every day, along with a whole bunch of other prizes. So there's going to be a lot going on that week. Visit hitthedecksportsmith.com to learn more about that. So here we are. That's the, that's the housekeeping side of things. I uh, got that out of the way. And uh, today we're going to be talking about workforce. I think um, particularly over the last um, several weeks, uh, we have had, as everyone seems to be ramping up for the summer season um, and spring summer season, uh, we have heard from a number of plate, number of people that um, workforce and hiring is more challenging now than ever. Um, we're hearing stories of 25% uh, of people that schedule an interview not showing up. We have heard stories of people um, accepting the job, going through training, showing up for one or two shifts, and then just disappearing, um, not even a phone call. So there's a, there's a lot of issues out there. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a daunting time for uh, the folks in the HR world that are, are charged with uh, finding all these people to, to work in all these various industries. And um, there are no uh, short-term solutions, I don't think, not that anyone has seen, I think we would have thought of it by now if there were some out there, um, but really it's a long-term thing that we need to think strategically about. 
Um, and, and that's really where today's conversation comes into play. Uh, we have had a wonderful partnership with the Portsmouth CTE Center uh, for many years now uh, and work very closely with um, Courtney and the team there to, to try to connect our local business community to the students so that they know of uh, job opportunities that are available locally. They know the career paths to get to those opportunities and we can hopefully keep them in our local economy and workforce moving forward. So today we're gonna to talk about a new tool in the toolbox on that, those efforts, um, and that's the Youth Apprenticeship Program. Uh, we are going to start with Anne, and Anne is the High School Apprenticeship Coordinate, Grant Manager, sorry, for the Community College System of New Hampshire. Prior to doing that, she was the Workforce Development Administrator, um, worked really closely with the team at the Apprenticeship NH. Uh, to develop uh, registered apprentice programs across the state. Prior to joining the community college uh, system, she worked in secondary education as a ELO, Extended Learning Opportunity Coordinator. She was a special education teacher, God bless you, and a paraprofessional. Uh, so she's had a, multiple different roles. It seems like she was even an entrepreneur at one point as well. So we're going to hear the state level about the, the program, and then we're going to bring it down to a local level and talk uh, really what does that mean for Portsmouth and how does this play out in our community. So with that, Anne, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great. Thanks. So thank you for having me and giving me some time to share our, our initiative. Um, if it's okay, I'm going to share my screen so that you can see. You can give me a thumbs up that you all see that, that would be great. Okay, great. So we are, um, I am from the community college system. And as some of you may or may not know, um, we are a system of seven colleges with five academic centers. Um, we specialize in associate degree programs and certificate programs. And we also have workforce development offices at almost all of the colleges and training programs that can be specifically customized um, for a business. Um, for the high school space, we do have transfer and dual admission programs. Um, and we're part of the 65 by 25 initiative. So um, the 65 by 25 is that, you know, 65% of our population will have a certification um, uh, industry recognized credential um, by the year 2025. So just a little bit about Apprenticeship New Hampshire. Um, it has been around and has been an initiative with the community college system since 2016, um, when we received a grant from the Federal Department of Labor. Um, and that whole purpose of that grant was to expand registered apprenticeships across the state in non-traditional sectors. When people think of apprenticeship, they always think of trades, automatically go to electrical and plumbing, um, unions. Um, so we really had a focus on getting into um, hospitality, healthcare, um, and manufacturing when we first started. Um, since then, we've expanded into additional sectors of IT um, and construction infrastructure as well. Um, since 2016, we've helped over 45 businesses um, develop registered apprenticeship programs, um, and some of those businesses have multiple occupations within their structure. Um, that's resulted with 220 apprentices have been added to the state, which is really, um, when we think of our population, it's pretty good um, in, a, in a short period of time. In 2019, um, we added a youth focus to our apprenticeship efforts, um, but it was on a limited basis. Um, I was the main person who was doing that and my time was split. Um, so it became very clear um, that we needed to do something to give this a bigger, a bigger focus, um, knowing that we have many students who leave the state. So this past July, we were awarded a $3.45 million grant, um, and that allowed us to really give this a full team effort um, and really have a focus. Um, so we are now focused on, in addition to our adult and community apprenticeships, um, we are focused on developing a pre-apprenticeship to registered apprenticeship pathway for high school students. Um, and that can begin with some work-based learning um, in as early as 10th and 11th grade, and then having students enter a registered apprenticeship program um, in 12th grade or just as they're leaving. And I'll go into a little bit more detail in that a little bit later. So our program as a whole um, 
as I said, we really needed a full team to get this going. Um, Beth Doran, who's the Director of College Access Programs um, in DOE and Initiatives, um, she has she oversees the full Apprenticeship New Hampshire initiative across the board. And I am the grant manager. Um, and what we now have, which is very exciting, is we have two apprentice and business outreach specialists, and they're broken up regionally. So there's Joan Glines, who covers your area, and she does the Seacoast, the North and central parts of the state, and then um, Marianne Gashnick, who does the south and western parts of the state. Um, so there's really someone who is the main focus. And what we do is we work as an intermediary um, between the U.S. Department of Labor, businesses, and high schools. So we'll help a business walk through the process of registering their program. Um, we'll take then work with that business to then connect with high schools who may have some um, instruction that relates to their apprenticeship program. Um, and then we work as a partner between all three to continue to feed into that existing program. So we work in six industry sectors of advanced manufacturing, automotive technology, business and finance, construction and infrastructure, hospitality, and healthcare. So if people have not seen um, one of our presentations before, I'm just gonna quickly go over what a registered apprenticeship is. Um, because we are federally funded, we follow the guidelines of a federal registered apprenticeship program. And there's five components that make up the registered apprenticeship. The first is that it's employer driven. So there is not an apprenticeship that can start without employer buy-in. Um, that's because they are the owners of the program. Um, the apprentices are employees of the company from day one. They get to start with a training outline and then customize that training outline to meet their specific occupation needs. Um, and so it really is built around what they're looking for and it helps build that pipeline of employees for, for the company. The next two components go hand in hand, and that's classroom um, instruction and on-the-job training. The on-the-job training is what takes place at the job site um, under um, one of your employees being a mentor for the apprentice. Um, and that's where the all of that hands-on piece comes from, and that's where that specific training to your business comes into play. Related instruction or classroom instruction is the technical education that matches the on-the-job training that can take place at the community college, that can take place at the in partnership with the CTE centers. Um, even we've even done um, some customized training that happens on site at the business location. The minimum number of hours for a registered apprenticeship is 2,000 hours of on-the-job training and 144 hours of related instruction. As the skill level for the occupation goes up, so do those hours. So for example, you know, the minimum is 2,144. If a, if a skill level needs to increase, it could go up to 4,000 hours of on-the-job training, and then there'd have to be 288 hours of related instruction to complement that. Um, the fourth component is a reward for skill gains. And all that is, is a fancy term for saying that you are going to guarantee some um, pay increases. Um, it starts with a beginning wage, which is at least minimum wage, but then also it's, it's gonna be slightly lower than what you would bring someone in who's fully qualified, because obviously you're training them. And then when they, their program ends, they're going to be making what you would bring someone in at um, who is fully qualified. In between the starting wage and the ending wage, there's going to be two pay increases. And that can be done based on skill level or time within the program. The last credential is the last, the last component is the um, national occupational credential. So the apprentice earns a credential from um, the US Department of Labor saying that they've been trained um, to federal standards. That's a win-win on both sides. The apprentice gets to say um, that they have this credential on their resume um, and the company gets to say that my employee has been trained to federal guidelines and standards. So with our grant, like I was saying, um, we're really focused on building that pre-apprenticeship to registered apprenticeship model. And what that means is that once you have a registered apprenticeship program developed, students can begin some of that related instruction 
and on the job training while they're in school. They can do this through taking um, Running Start courses, which are college level courses taught at the high school level, um, or doing early college courses, meaning that they're working into their day um, and going to the college campus. Um, they could be looking at um, using the CTE Center curriculum as part of that. And then there's also a work-based learning um, component to where if they're doing internships, you can use that credit towards the on-the-job training hours. I mean, what that means for the employer is then you can then advance place a student into your apprenticeship program. So if you have a 2000 hour occupation and 144 hour related instruction, you know, they could be chipping away at some of those hours and maybe they're getting, you know, 45, 50 hours of that related instruction or, you know, through an internship, getting 40 hours of that um, on the job training and taking off. Um, one of the great things about us being grant funded um, is that we are able to provide um, some scholarship and support services for students. Um, what we find for employees um, in general, but specifically for students, is that we can build fantastic programs across the state, but they can't necessarily get there. Um, and so our support services can help with things like transportation, or if it's in healthcare, we can purchase scrubs, manufacturing, steel toe boots, things like that. Um, we also have some stipend for high school partners to help us coordinate efforts. And then there's also on-the-job training support funds um, to help employers. So we can't pay wages directly, but we can reimburse the company. So this is just a, a graphic outline of what we're looking to develop. So in 10th and 11th grade, um, they could be and students could be entering the CTE program, taking part in that work-based learning, um, doing that internship and extended learning opportunity, taking some dual enrollment courses, um, and really digging into that kind of career exploration. Um, and then they could, if a business has a registered apprenticeship, that business can then look at what that student has done, advance place them in when they hire them into um, the apprenticeship program, either in 12th grade or again on upon graduation. So the benefits to the apprentice are kind of a no brainer. Um, it is, you know, they're employees, they're earning money while they're learning. It all leads to a viable career pathway. Um, most will leave with little to no student debt. Um, and then for the employer, um, oh, I don't know what happened to that little title there, but um, for the employer, it really is a strategic recruitment plan. Um, it's reaching down to youth to expose them to um, the careers that are available to them um, and really pairing them up with a mentor within your business um, so that there's a knowledge transfer being passed down. Um, we also know that not only are students leaving the state, we know that there's a great deal of retirements. And so tapping into that knowledge before people retire. Um, going through the work-based learning process um, and extended learning opportunities and CTEs, um, that student is gonna be more confident entering into a career because they've sampled it. So they're gonna know about the business, they're gonna know about the occupation, which is gonna to lead to a little bit more um, stickiness to your business. Um, and then the pre-apprentices, because they're going through some of the training prior, can actually be more productive for you as they enter because they will be getting some of that um, related instruction or on the job training prior to being hired into the registered apprenticeship. So we do have a new website. Well, we have an old website, but now the high school has a page, which is pretty exciting. Um, you can feel free to contact me with any questions. Um, we are planning a whole series of events. So, you know, be on the lookout for some of those events. Um, and if you have an existing registered apprenticeship program, just let us know and we'll be able to um, help walk you through developing that pre-apprenticeship. And that's it. So I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, so we did have a question come through from Renee, who has uh, Monkey Mine Escape Rooms in downtown Portsmouth. Fabulous time. If you've never checked it out, I highly recommend it. Um, anyways, her question really is, um, uh, she's unsure if the if her industry has a national industry certificate. It's an entertainment amusement um, industry, uh, escape rooms. Um, so would they be able to find a way to uh, participate in this? 
Um, the best way to find out is to send over a job description um, and then we can check our database. So the Department of Labor, the Federal Department of Labor has a huge database of multiple occupations. Um, and that's our starting point and that's our path of least resistance. So if we can match up your current job role with something that's in there, it makes it a lot faster and a lot easier. If there isn't something in there, we can develop an occupation for that. Um, it just takes a little bit longer because it has to go through the federal process. Um, you know, I've been told by the Office of Apprenticeship that that process is starting to speed up a little bit because they know that they have to do it. Um, so, you know, I think that would be the best bet. I can put my email in the chat. And if you just want to send me your job description, we can take a look and see what might be able to fit. Great, and uh, one of the questions uh, I want to ask was, um, so our our employers and our business owners are already, uh, you know, scrambling to keep keep whatever they do, make products or or cook food, whatever it is, uh, right now with with limited staff. Um, how much effort is it to to go through this process? Are we talking? Uh, you know, it's a one page form, or is it you know a pretty long and, and, and drawn out process? It's a multiple page form, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> um, but that's what we're here for. Um, you know, I think one of the greatest points that we figured out um, or that, you know, as, as a team is that, you know, there's a number of businesses that want to connect with high schools and a number of high schools that want to connect with businesses and neither of that, that doesn't fall into anybody's full time job, you know, so, but this is our full-time job. So we really try to take as much work off of the business owner and the school as possible. Um, you know, like I was saying, we'll look at the job description, we'll find the, um, the outline, and then it's getting the feedback from you on that outline. And then there's a couple of interview things that we do with you um, just to find out your hiring practices and determine your progressive pay wage. And then we put all of that into a package um, and send that off to the DOL. Um, and then we just enter into agreements with the high schools and, and kind of go through that same process. You know, we work at the pace of the employer. Um, so, you know, if an employer is super ambitious, then we can try and move that along as quickly as possible. But if they're just as busy and they can't get it done, then we, we go at their pace. Um, I would say that a speedy um, turnaround time. Um, we started working with a welding company um, in probably mid to late January, um, and the standards were sent off last week. So it's just a matter of, you know, coordinating schedules and developing everything. So three to four months. Is yeah, that I would say, you know, three months, if, if, if everybody's moving and everybody's going, it's three, about three months to, to get the whole thing up and running. Okay, great. Awesome. Well, I think we'll, we'll dive into what this may mean on a local level for us here in Portsmouth. And then as, as other questions arise or other people have questions, please, please drop them into the chat so that we can get back to them. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll bring Courtney up. Courtney is the director of the CTE Center at Portsmouth High School uh, in her third school year, second this is my second school year. Second. Oh, time flies. All right. So second school year. So her first year, um, she had to deal with the pandemic and trying to educate, um, you know, very hands-on programming in a remote environment. Um, but Courtney comes to Portsmouth High School from the, the State uh, Department of Education, uh, where she worked with CTE centers all over the state. Uh, I personally have been working with her for the past two years, and uh, she has already made a tremendous impact uh, at the CTE Center and is bringing new programs on board and has really um, done a lot to, in a very short period of time, to make a big impact. So um, with that, I think Courtney's going to share a little bit about the CTE Center in Portsmouth and how all this plays out locally. Great. Thanks for having me here, folks. Um, I definitely want to thank the Chamber for their partnership and Ann and CCSNH as well. Um, you'll see the links between what Ann was speaking about and CTE at the local 
the level in my presentation. Um, there are so many ways that education and industry and post-secondary connect to support students. And we wanna make that connection um, to support our local industry even more during all these COVID challenges that we have, which is why we wanted to come out here and share those opportunities with all of you folks so that we can figure out more ways to partner and support one another and the whole community as we get through the pandemic. So I'm gonna briefly um, share a PowerPoint with you, just kind of going over what CTE in Portsmouth looks like and um, what our opportunities are for local programming. So give me one second to share my screen. And again, if you folks would give me a thumbs up if you can share my screen, you see that? All right. Um, so um, as of the 2022 school year next year, we're actually going to have eight CTE programs here at Portsmouth High School. Uh, we have about 1,100 students at Portsmouth High School and the CTE programs have about 400 students in them at any given time. Um, career and technical education is focused around having a sequence of courses that's typically two years. Um, it's open generally from sophomore year on. Um, today, we have students trying to complete the two-year program in sophomore and junior year and then go out and do extended learning opportunities or earn pre-apprenticeships during their senior year. So they're very career and college ready, whether they choose to go to two-year schools, four-year schools, um, or straight into the workforce. So um, very excited to say that next year we have a brand new health science technology program that is gonna start. We're actually in the process of hiring an instructor for that program right now. Um, but let me just jump right into a little overview of who is um, Portsmouth CTE and what we offer. Um, so Steve Jones has been in the district for almost 30 years and he teaches architecture design build. Um, we have multiple career pathways for students to choose from in their CTE programs. And he focuses both on um, a drafting design pathway and an architectural design pathway. Um, so his classes are actually semester long classes where the students have an opportunity to earn some articulated credit, which means if they successfully pass the courses in the sequence for the program, they will have earned some college credits um, at Keene State College. Um, so that's one of our programs. They're actually working on a special project right now um, with the Mayor's Blue Ribbon Committee to build planters and get those set up to beautify our local hospitality industry and uh, the Jersey barriers that are downtown um, when they set up the roadside dining during COVID. So those materials just came in and they're getting ready to work on that project. Um, automotive technology is a traditional two-year sequence of courses. Um, and again, many of these classes are aligned to either running start college credit at the high school. Students have an opportunity to either earn college credit for a very reduced rate or the opportunity to earn credit up to two a year through the governor's STEM scholarship, which is at no cost to the students. Um, and in the automotive program, students actually get a professional industry certification um, in ASE. Our students just took their ASE exams. This is finals week um, and they had fantastic results for a COVID year. So we're two students away from 100% ASE certification. Um, it's very exciting. They also do SP2 certifications, which are um, environmental and waste management certifications in that program. Um, business entrepreneurship, again, has multiple pathways. So these students might choose to focus on accounting and finance pathways or pathways in entrepreneurship. Um, that program works very heavily with the industry, um, setting up mentorships and business plans. And again, all of the kids in all of these programs, we try to get out into the greater community to practice their soft skills and get a feel for what the real world looks like before they choose a post-secondary pathway so that they really have a solid feel if they want to stay within a pathway before investing in the costs that are included in school loans and long-term pathways. It's better for them to figure it out here while they're in high school before they are committed to a major 
um, and starting to build up some debt. So whether they fall in love with the pathway when they try it or they find out it's not the best pathway for them, um, developmentally, we're all about helping them find what best interests them um, and how they can be successful in the long term. So accounting too is brand new to us this year. Um, and in this program, business and entrepreneurship right now, students are able to get running start credit. So that's college credit in four of the five courses in the program. Um, so they can walk away with essentially their first semester of community college done for low to no cost after being in the business entrepreneurship. Um, and that's just a, another way that we've partnered with post-secondary to really benefit our students. And we're always looking for new ways to do that. That's why we wanted to share with our industry partners today to find out how we can come together um, and benefit one another even more. Um, careers in education is certainly a personal favorite for me. Um, we run an in-house preschool program. Um, this year, it's actually expanded to a P through four program because of the needs of the community and teachers to have more available care for students and more support for remote learners. Um, so until we go back five days full time in another couple of weeks, um, we're running a school within a school within a school um, with preschoolers, kindergartens, first through fourth in two of our classrooms here at the high school. And then the high school students have the opportunity to get their classroom learning with Ms. Carla Frank, um, and then go into the preschool with Ms. Serrano and actually practice their classroom learning hands-on in the preschool and multi-age classroom. They also do observations and field sites during a non-COVID year in very really learning centers all over the district and other grade levels all over the district. So they can determine if they want to be a school counselor, an elementary, middle school teacher, maybe a behavioral therapist or go into PT or OT. So um, it's wonderful to have the opportunity to recruit and train the next generation of educators. Um, computer science is a brand new program that actually was approved um, last spring during our remote learning period in COVID. So um, the computer science programs courses are again, all aligned to Running Start. The students are able to get college credits for object oriented programming, um, Python, web design and Java classes. Um, that program has thrived in the remote learning environment during COVID. Uh, we are lucky enough to have a fantastic programming instructor, Mr. Gordon Reynolds. Um, and as that program matures and progresses, again, he's looking for more opportunities to partner with web development, graphic design, um, programming, and IT partners throughout the community so that his kids can get out into the field and learn more hands-on um, about what the real world of programming looks like. Um, that has been um, a very well subscribed program. <laughs> and we're just looking forward to seeing that grow alongside our new health science program. Um, culinary arts um, is another strong program. Certainly um, I see faces out there actually on our presentation today that are part of the advisory board with culinary arts. So um, Chef Brown is an amazing resource for the students. She partners through Lakes Region Community College to have her students earn Running Start credits in her program. Um, they cook locally for events here in the high school and also on a non-COVID year have a gourmet to go program where the, <clears throat> excuse me, students develop a menu, select all the materials, prep and create dinners that are then sold to the public. Um, and they also have the opportunity to participate in skills and leadership competitions through a career and technical student organization. Um, called Skills USA. So um, they also get Serve Safe and Pro Start certifications through being part of the program. Um, so a lot of ways that these students have an opportunity to really grow and develop um, and get a head start really on their future career pathways when they're in that program. Um, this is a program I think that's a perfect fit when we're talking about pre-apprenticeship opportunities. This is our very exciting new program for next year, Health Science Technology. We rolled out an exploratory course this year um, to see what student interest was and to give some students some introductory exposure to career pathways in healthcare. Um, it's been very well received. 
we've had 70 students sign up for our first semester of courses. So we have three sections of that course running. Um, and we have guest speakers coming in from all over the place, pharmacists, EMTs, um, doctors, dentists. Um, it gives students an opportunity to basically explore all career pathways in the health sciences and animal sciences. And then we're working on capstone programming. When year one rolls out next year, we're focused on making that course aligned to medical terminology credit for students through Running Start with the colleges. And then in their capstone years, um, we're looking to partner with local industry for students to go out and do their clinical hours to get their LNA certifications. We're looking at partnering with organizations to provide EMT certification options. And then we've just started exploring um, the wildlife EMR certifications for students. So again, um, giving them an opportunity to kind of dive in full speed ahead and get some industry recognized credentials to make them more marketable before they go on to post-secondary or career opportunities. So I'm very excited to put a hiring committee together um, to start looking at applicants to teach the health science program next year. Um, and then welding technology um, is a very strong program here in Portsmouth. Um, the students in welding work towards getting their AWS certifications. Um, we are actually trying to bring some normalcy back to this school year and we've partnered with um, three of the other local centers in Exeter and Dover, as well as with Great Bay Community College to um, and Novel Ironworks to have a welding competition held locally, socially distanced and masked this May. So those students are going to be able to get back out into the field in a real world environment and take their skills from the classroom and the lab into novel ironworks where they'll compete against their peers from other centers. Um, they normally would do this um, through Skills USA on a statewide level and then have the opportunity to go in person um, on a national level. And a lot of that has been curtailed due to safety issues. Um, so we're really um, excited to bring that back on May 7th. And again, these students can also earn Running Start credit. This program's aligned with Manchester Community College um, for them to get college credit in welding in addition to their AWS program. So um, what we hear most frequently from our industry partners is the need for students to have those soft skills um, to be career ready. Um, just those things that Ben was talking about when we started about getting them to show up, be prepared, um, be reliable and be on time. And um, that is a huge part of what we're doing here at Portsmouth High School. We have a brand new career and college readiness coordinator this year. Um, her name's Nicole Bellabona. Given the COVID craziness, Nicole has been pulled out of her position and put into a classroom and is teaching for us this semester, but she'll be back into her role. So um, just sharing our contact information with you, Nicole and I um, are your best contacts for building partnerships and relationships with CTE in Portsmouth. We're always open to hearing new ideas and um, opportunities to partner and um, Really, she will coordinate internship opportunities for students, industry tours, guest speakers and mentors coming into the classroom. Um, and I'm a great contact for bringing industry in. I cannot wait until we can open up the doors of Portsmouth CTE again and invite you folks to come in and tour and see what career and technical education looks like in person. Um, I think that it offers many great opportunities for students. And again, we are definitely, a, big part of the city and want to be as supportive of one another as possible. So um, we'd love to invite anybody in to partner in any ways that we can find are mutually beneficial. That's it for me, Ben. I'll stop screen sharing. All right. Well, thank you, Courtney. I, I appreciate all that. Um, I was um, just earlier today talking to um, somebody um, who was involved with the project at the middle school. And we were commenting on how every time we go into a school, um, we get to be with these students, we leave inspired and like excited about the future um, of having these young folks come out and join us in the industry. Um, Cause they really are phenomenal. Um, and it's always, always such a pleasurable experience. 
Um, could you maybe, before we take any other questions that are popping up, could, could you maybe just run through the two to you, Anne and Courtney, like a, a real life example of what um, a, a youth apprenticeship program could develop here in the Portsmouth market? Sure. Um, and I don't know if you have any ready, you know, ideas in mind for me. Again, culinary arts and hospitality industry is a field that is just ripe for needing support. And also, you know, for expanding training, we had the fantastic apprenticeship in the North Country that does not, you know, exist anymore. And most of the chefs that I know locally actually come from that apprenticeship program, I would love to see Portsmouth align with one of our restaurant tours to offer something like that. And I think um, that exists in other places throughout the state, but maybe not here on the seacoast yet, Anne. Yeah, so we do have, there's a couple of um, really great options that you could do, um, and especially pairing up with the CT centers of culinary is one of those areas. Um, there is, we are in the process of developing a different, the, the Restaurant and Lodging Association, the national one, has come up with a new um, line cook apprenticeship that we're allowed to use here in the state. And I would be able to connect you with my colleague, Emily Zane, who can kind of walk you through that process a little bit more. Um, instead of it being a three-year um, apprenticeship, I believe it's down to a year or a year and a half, um, which is really great um, because that means that they're they're getting skilled faster. Um, what how it can really connect with the CTE centers and we'll use culinary as an example. And then I can actually look at um, welding because we just built a welding one as well. So, um, you know, with that culinary, if a student was to start with some work-based learning and they did some tours of, of a restaurant um, and they saw what that inner workings was and they decide that, oh, this would be great. This is something that I wanna do. Then they enroll in that CTE program and they're getting a little bit deeper. They're earning some of that college credit through LRCC. Um, and then, you know, the, you can do also develop a internship program. So we have a company, not a culinary company, but we have a company who has developed a pre-apprenticeship pathway to where they do a 40 hour unpaid internship um, and then an 80 hour paid internship. And then upon that completion, they're guaranteed an interview into that registered apprenticeship program. Though that internship and that those on the job training hours translate directly into the on the job training of the registered apprenticeship. So we actually looked at the, the training that happens there, figured out what the student would be able to do in that time frame and put that into their internship so that then if they get hired in, the employer can then say, okay, well, you don't have to do task A, B, and C anymore because I saw you do that here. Um, it really ends up being, you know, for lack of a better, of a better term, um, you know, a really long extended interview process, right? So for both sides. So the student gets to try out that company, they get to try out the career, but the employer is also getting to see that student in action. Um, you know, another option is we are just, we just built the welding program um, for a company out in Greenfield, and they're going to look at the CTE curriculum across the state um, and see, you know, they're probably going to end up adopting um, and saying that the welding programs in the state are pre-apprenticeships. And so those that have, you know, articulation agreements or running start programs at the college because their related instruction is going through Manchester Community College, um, they don't have to retake those courses. So it really is, it's win-win um, kind of across the board. Very good, thank you. Um, we did have a question come through. Would this qualify for credits towards a journeyman certificate? I'm not sure what you, I don't know. I'm not familiar with journeyman, Does anyone? Are you talking about electrical, like a journeyman for electrical or plumbing? I think so, yes. Um, so electrical, definitely. That first example that um, I had talked about um, was an electric company that has that um, pre-apprenticeship to registered apprenticeship pathway. Um, so their unpaid internship hours cannot come off that related instruction, but their paid internship 
can because they can get their apprentice license through um, the state of New Hampshire um, at the age of 16. They can start accumulating hours as long as they're con connected to an employer and a um, school. Okay. And then uh, something you mentioned earlier that I just wanted to touch base on again was you said that there were some funds available to reimburse the employer for the on-the-job training. Is that a is that a ratio or is there a percentage or is that a one-to-one -one match or anything like that? Um, it's until um, grant funds last. <laughs> you know, so I don't have a better term than that. We have a certain amount budgeted for OJT, um, which is pretty generous, but it's per apprentice. Um, and we can reimburse, we can reimburse the apprentices wages. Okay, very good. Um, uh, how about uh, plumbing? Is there a similar um, program for plumbing? Um, I don't want to say I'm not as confident with the plumbing, um, but I will. I can find out. I know that they can take the related instruction. Every year of the two year programming of a CTE center usually equates to one year of related instruction um, for a registered apprenticeship, and that I'm that I'm pretty confident in saying. Um, so if a student is in a plumbing program at a CTE center and they're entering into a plumbing apprenticeship, that first year of related instruction can be waived. The same Great. with the well. um, And then this may be a question for Courtney. Um, so Renee with Monkey Mind Escape Room again was wondering if, if there's is there other ways to get students involved in her business and, and whether it's a job shadow or, or what, what are some other engagement opportunities there? Yeah, I definitely think um, apprenticeships are pretty official and there's a very specific pathway um, to forming an apprenticeship, but most high schools have um, apprentice or internship programs. Um, that might be paid or unpaid. And again, it all depends on Department of Labor regulations around each industry as to at what age level students can apprentice or be an intern in a specific field. Um, so depending on what the exact job title you're looking at, um, certainly can put together a job description or an ad if you were looking to have an internship posting. Um, and that would be something that Nicole could work with somebody on as far as setting up um, your site as an approved work-based learning site for the state, um, and then setting up individual students that might be interested in learning more about your business. Um, usually we do that on a quarterly basis. So um, a student could trial an internship for nine weeks. And then if an employer and the intern both feel like it's been a successful learning opportunity, then they have the opportunity to continue that on. I'm sorry, yep, Nicole Bellabona um, was shared yet yeah, at the end of our PowerPoint. She's the career and college readiness coordinator at the high school, and I can put her email back into the chat for you. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Nicole's fabulous. I've gotten to know her pretty well over the last year. She's, she's wonderful. All right, any final questions for our speakers? I can't tell you enough. If you have never had the opportunity to tour um, the Portsmouth CTE Center, or if you are, because we do have a few people from other areas joining us today, uh, there are other fabulous CTE centers in our region. Dover has a great program. Rochester has a great program. Um, and, and Exeter at the, the school there has a wonderful program as well. So uh, we are very fortunate to have a very diverse and, and great uh, network of programs in this area. And it's great to see some partnerships developing there and some of these competitions and things like that would be a lot of fun. Um, but there are many ways to be engaged as the business leader. Um, they have uh, each of these uh, CTE programs has an advisory group. That's a great way to be engaged. And then um, there's, there's other opportunities that I'm sure Courtney would be happy to, to talk to people about. So with that, I think we're at a good place to wrap up. Um, Valerie Roshan, our president, when we started this over a year ago, um, has always ended these chats with something fun and, and uh, entertaining to just sort of lift our spirits. And with the absolutely stunning day that is outside right now, we thought we would get everyone excited for um, dining outside in downtown Portsmouth. 
Um, on April 1st, they uh, dropped the barriers again and people have been slowly but surely getting their tables and their umbrellas and their heaters and their carpets and all their stuff outside. Soon those Jersey barriers will be uh, decorated with wonderful uh, planter boxes. Uh, if you've seen the design for these, the design that came from our Portsmouth CTE Center and they're starting the construction of these boxes there um, soon. And I think those will be in around May 1st, is that our goal? Oh, there we go. We got a, we got we got the design there. Um, they are fabulous looking. They're going to really make a huge impact on those downtown uh, planter boxes, uh, the downtown Jersey barriers that are slightly better now because they've been painted, but these will be even more beautiful down the road. So, um, so with that, we are going to share from our friends at New Hampshire Public Radio. Uh, we may know some people there. Um, that uh, did a fun, this is probably the one and only time we'll, we'll be doing TikToks on our uh, Chamber Chat Lives, um, but you know, um, we're excited about it. I was playing this earlier, my daughter from like two rooms over was like, dad, is that TikTok? And uh, came running. So here it is. Oh, wait, where'd it go? <laughs> TikTok, our moment of Zen, if you will. Uh, I want to thank Anne and Courtney so much for their time today. Um, and so much, thank you so much for your efforts with our students. Um, they're phenomenal programs. And I encourage everyone to uh, get engaged in some way, shape, or form with that. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to them directly. Um, they are fabulous. Uh, with that, have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy this beautiful weather we're having and get out there and, uh, and check out our, our downtown vibrant uh, decks and, and streetlets and parklets and all that sort of stuff they have going on. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.